You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show presented by John Deere. Good evening, everyone. From the Beaver Dam High School Fieldhouse, Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN proudly present Beaver Dam High School Golden Beaver Boys Basketball. And tonight, it's a showdown in the Badger East Conference. The Wanakee Warriors are in town to take on your Beaver Dam Golden Beavers. Hi again, everybody. Mike Tronson with you inside the field house, and I'm joined on site by my videographer and engineer, Justin Wilski, a.k.a. Ninja. And I want to thank Kyra, who's my radio engineer back at the 1430 ESPN Studios. This broadcast tonight is brought to you by our presenting video sponsors, Columbus Family Dental, Hometown Glass and Improvement, and the Beaverdam Unified School District. Tonight's game is also brought to you by John Deere Horicon Works, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Air Care, Richards Insurance, Metalcraft of Mayville, Landmark Credit Union, Jerry's Automotive, McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Ergo Bank, Great Harvest Bakery Cafe, Surefire, Fox Brothers Piggly Wiggly, Preferred Dental Partners, Slumberland, and Kraft Heinz. Welcome in to our pregame show brought to you by John Deere. Our good friends at John Deere Horicon Works. We're just minutes away from the tip of this Badger East Conference tilt. Should be a fun one as these two teams get set to do battle. And uh, Beaver Dam coming in with a 3-5 and five overall mark. The Golden Beavers have lost four consecutive games. Now, you look at it, and uh, the competition was pretty pretty tough over the last couple of weeks. Uh, the Golden Beavers, over the holiday break, went down to the New Berlin West Viking Classic and played Germantown and McWanago on back-to-back -back days, falling to McWanago 75-52 and Germantown 78-53. Prior to that, Beaverdam had lost a couple of conference games, one to Sauk Prairie, another one on the road at DeForest. So they're 1-3 and three in the Badgeries, 3-5 and five overall. That doesn't sound like you know, a flashy record, but when you talk with head coach Tim Ladron, uh, he thinks his guys are in a, uh, a pretty good spot. He says, now remember, they're young, and so they're still trying to establish an identity, and you know, they're showing flashes of what they're capable of. Uh, the you know the issue has been consistency. They he just says we haven't put a, a, a full 36 minutes together yet. But he said I'm excited for what the rest of the season holds. Coach Ladrin really believes that these boys can maybe get on a roll here. Now it's going to be easier said than done when you're playing teams like Wanakee. But but Coach Ladrin says to me he says you know I think we, we're capable of getting on a roll here. And he said one thing that's going to probably help is the Golden Beavers starting tonight will play five games in the next 10 days. That's a busy stretch, and he he hopes that it's going to help the guys get into a rhythm more so than, you know, when you play a game or two games and you sit for three, four days, and you play a game and you sit for two days. This, they're not going to be sitting very much over the next couple of weeks with uh, all those games that are on the schedule. And so he thinks that they have a chance to get into a rhythm and, uh, you know, uh, maybe go on a, a second-half run here. So, yeah, anything's possible. We'll wait and see, but... Uh, you know, they have been getting some, some outstanding performances. Uh, as we talked about, you've got uh, JT Call leading the way with uh, 13 points a game right now, 4.1 rebounds per contest. Uh, you've got Jack Jens averaging just under 10 points a game. He's about 9 points a game this season, 3.8 rebounds a contest. Cam Mendoza's been pretty solid, 8.8 .8 points a game and 4.5 and rebounds per contest. What Coach Ladrin would like to see is a few more guys around them step up on a more consistent basis. Meanwhile, you've got Wana Key in here and head coach Dana McKenzie's squad. They come in at 5-3 and three overall. They're a perfect 3-0 and oh right now in Badger East Conference play. Uh, the Warriors have won three in a row. They uh, beat Watertown on December 20th, and then over the holiday break, they hosted their uh, Wanakee Classic and uh, had wins against Wauwatosa East, 57-51, and another close one, but a win, 52-47, over Kettle Moraine. This is a, a, a different Wanakee team this year. They lost a lot of talent to graduation last year, but you know what? They're still winning, and you know it's just a... It just goes to show you what a heck of a program this Wanakee uh, squad is. Uh, Dana McKenzie, his staff, they've done a heck of a job for so many years, and it's kind of a next man up approach. So even though you've got guys in different roles this year, uh, they are they're still playing very well, and they they're they're long. They have some length, and that's 
something that has uh, you know been causing Beaver Dam trouble when they play teams that have some length. So certainly that's an advantage for the Warriors tonight. But uh, they come in on a roll. As I said, they've won three in a row. And uh, they've got some uh, quality players on this roster. Speaking of uh, players averaging in double figures, uh, Jake Bova averaging 12.3 a game on the season. 2.5 rebounds a game for Jake Bova. You've got Eli Selk averaging 9.5 points a game. Eli Selk is the uh, son of former Randolph standout Tyler Selk. And he's playing well. Uh, Keaton Frisch, a name you'll hear a lot tonight. 8.8 points a game, 5 rebounds a contest. So just some of the names you'll hear. But, uh, again, this is a quality, quality outfit. Should be a great game. Should be a fun game. We'll see if Beaver Dam can, uh, you know, hang with them here. And, uh, you know, because the Golden Beavers, again, having lost four in a row, looking to turn it around. Not an easy team to do it against. But one thing we've learned about Beaver Dam this season is they've got a lot of fight in them. That is for sure. So that's our matchup. Right now we'll step aside for a timeout as the Beaver Dam High School pep band entertains the crowd during warm-ups. Let's take a two-minute break. We're back for more of our John Deere pregame show after this two-minute break on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN. John Deere not only builds great equipment, it's a great place to build your career and a high quality of life. You see, there's a certain kind of pride in being a part of a great American brand. It's the security that comes from learning new skills you'll have for a lifetime, a more confident future with unlimited growth opportunities, and the knowledge that you're valued and rewarded with a competitive benefits package. We're Deer Strong and Horicon Proud. Are you one of us? Welcome back to our live coverage of Stunt Magician Merlin Wormwood, brought to you by Surefire, your leading local installer of Lennox Home Comfort Systems. That's right, Matilda. Merlin Wormwood has locked himself in his mother's basement and is refusing to install a Lennox Home Comfort System from Surefire until she promises to start making him pizza bagels every Friday evening. Chuck, I'm sorry. How is this stunt magic? Isn't this just a lame protest? Mm, have you tried his mom's pizza bagels? They're incredible. When we come back, what's the secret behind Merlin's mother's pizza bagels? And the latest weather report with Surefire, up next. With a finance plan to fit every budget, today is the time to upgrade to new Lennox Home Comfort System from Surefire, your local Lennox premier dealer. Online at surefireinc.com. Be sure Deck the garage during the Big Finish sales event at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam featuring the best deals of the year on the best vehicles in the market. Take five grand off brand new Ram 1500 Bighorn Crew Cabs and finance rates as low as 1.9%. Dodge Durango starting at 43219, Jeep Compass Trailhawks under 37 grand and just arrived, the all new Jeep Grand Cherokee 4xe. Welcome to the electric revolution. Happy holidays and thank you for allowing our family to take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam and ReedChrysler.com. You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show presented by John Deere. And we continue our John Deere pregame show inside the Beaver Dam High School Fieldhouse. Mike Tronson standing by with Tim Ladron, head coach of the Golden Beavers. Coach, Happy New Year. Good to see you. First uh, game of the 2023 calendar year, first conference game of the new calendar year. We'll talk about that in a second, but just recap if you can a little bit. Uh, the holiday stretch, you went down to New Berlin last week. Uh, lost a couple of games, but I mean, some quality, quality competition. Yeah, good opponents. And, you know, and I, I think we played really well in spurts. Um, you know, I we had two good first halves. We were we trailed by uh, four to Germantown at half, and we let McQuaddo go at half. Um, and then you know, gave up two big runs start second half of both games, and and that was kind of the difference. Um, you know, I think it was good for our kids. I think you know we ran into a couple of really hot shooting teams. Um, you know, I think defensively. The numbers don't say it, but I think with defensively we were pretty good against McQuantico. Um They had a couple kids that don't normally knock down a lot of shots, knocked down a lot of shots. Uh, they had a kid who was averaging 25 a game. We held them to seven. Um, you know, so we, we were doing some good things. Um, you know, just haven't, you know, similar to what the Forest game was, just really haven't put the full 36 minutes together yet. Well, you know, I heard you say on the radio earlier today that, uh, you know, even though the team is three and five, which doesn't sound like a whole lot, that you you think that the the kids are in a good spot right yeah. now. Elaborate on that. Why why is that? Yeah, you know, um, 
I, you know, our practices have been really good. Our attitude's been great. I think everybody's kind of on the same page of where we need to get better. Um, and they've been they've been upbeat. And you know, I think there was, you know, obviously we don't ever want to you know lose basketball games and, and that type of thing. But I think there was a, a sense of a growing that was going to happen this year a little bit. And I think that the kids understand that too. But I also think they they see where the progress is. Um, you know, so I think. You know, from that standpoint, uh, the, you know, our kids have been, you know, really dialed into what we're trying to do, um, and you know, we're making some adjustments along the way, and they've bought, and they're buying into it. So, um, I, I really like where our kids are at. They're a hardworking group of kids um, that really put a lot of effort into it. So, um, I, from that standpoint, I've been pretty happy with it. Yeah, to me, you know, you just mentioned the full 36 minutes, and I can understand that because as I look at your team, what I've seen so far this year, um, well, I, for, I certainly don't question the heart and the fight in the team, but they've shown flashes. Yep. They've shown flashes at times that they can be yeah. really good. It's just a matter of getting that consistency, isn't it? It is, and a lot of it for us comes on the offensive end. Uh, you know, we're just running into some scoring droughts that are really hurting us, and against really good teams like we'll see tonight, um, you can't have big scoring droughts because no matter how good your defense is, it's just it's hard to lock a good team down like that for that long. And so we've got it. You know, we're we're working on some things offensively to make some changes of what we're doing. Um, and you know, and that's all. That process is also going to take a little bit of time. But um, again, I think you know what we've done um, so far as a whole has been really good. It's just again, yeah, it's just not putting that whole thing together, especially on the offensive side. Want to key in here tonight? I know they probably don't need an introduction, and I, just like everybody, they lose. You know, they lost some talent to graduation, but they seem to keep on rolling, especially in conference. Well, they're so long. <laughs> they, they, they typically are, but it's a different long this year. You know, last year I think when we played them the one time, I think they started two kids at six eight, two at six seven. This year it's it's six eight, and then a bunch of six three guys, and so um, and for us that's hard. You know, and I always think defensively. I think you're better, like as a whole, when when you have a team that's like got a bunch of six three guys, because you can switch everything and you can you know you do a lot of things defensively that are really hassle, and that's what Wanaki is. And uh, they have some really good skilled guards that have a lot of experience, and then some young kids that can really play off the bench. And so they got a really nice mix, and they're playing a little bit different this, this year, a little bit more open. Um, and they you know and they're scoring a lot of points, and defensively they're really good as always. Well, you're kind of getting into the, uh, I guess, quote unquote, meat of the schedule now. This is the start of a busy stretch. You've got Wanakee tonight. You've got uh, games coming up next week, Tuesday at Watertown. Thursday, the makeup against Baraboo. Saturday, next week from Saturday, Wapan. Oh, I missed the Milwaukee Vincent game this Saturday. So uh, you're not going to have a lot of time to, uh, to uh, you know, to think much in between games because they're going to come one after the other. Yeah, you know, two of these games, the Vincent games, a makeup from Sparta, Sparta, the Sparta miss, and the Sparta didn't want to reschedule, so we're playing them, and then Baraboo's a makeup too. So now we're, yeah, we're we're five games in ten days here, um, but I, I'm excited for it. I think our kids are ready for it. Um, you know, we've gone some stretches here with a lot of time with, without games. So I'm excited how we to see how we respond to it. Um, you know, there's a lot of maturity and mental growth that comes from playing a lot of games in a short amount of time and we're going to be able to see that from our kids this this next week and see where we're at that way i think our kids are going to respond well and hopefully it allows us to get into a little bit of a rhythm it just you know a game or two here or there and a long break and a game or two here or there and a long break i think it's been part of the thing that's been tough on us and hopefully it allows us to get a little bit of rhythm here looking forward to it tim good luck to you and the boys tonight thanks as always for your time do appreciate it yeah thanks mike appreciate it all right, Tim Ladron, head coach of Beaver Dam. We'll step aside, and we're back right after this on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN. American drivers overpay an average of $368 per year on their auto insurance. Why? Because, well, insurance is hard. It's complicated. It's time-consuming to get quotes from multiple companies, so we overpay. Or we call Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. Make one call and receive a quote from a great company like Auto Owners Insurance. The team at Richards Insurance will literally do all the work for you. So if you could be saving money each month with an auto owner's insurance policy, you'll know about it. How much will you save with Richards Insurance? To find out, call Richards Insurance or stop in at 123 North Spring Street, downtown Beaver Dam. With offices in Columbus, Watertown, West Bend, and Oshkosh. With over 50 employees and hundreds of years insurance experience across five offices, you'll get full service counseling with no obligation. Your auto owner's insurance carrier is Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. 
Call 887-1615. We'll be there with you. Richards Insurance of Beaver Dam. Are you ready for peace of mind? Chad Guzzi here, owner of Aircare and Beaver Dam. If you're tired of unexpected repair bills, you want to sign up for our total care plan. It ensures top performance and prolonged life of your heating and air conditioning equipment. AirCare's Total Care customers receive annual inspections as well as a reduced maintenance rate plus a 10% discount on all service repairs. AirCare, big enough to serve you, small enough to care, 920-356-8860. Hi, this is Dr. Adam Forster at Columbus Family Dental. If you've been unhappy with your smile, it's time that you come and see us. Our team of doctors are waiting to help you get your smile back. We'll take the time to talk with you and treat you like a member of our family, not just another number. Whether it's a whole mouth makeover or simply a little tweak, we'll find the right solution that fits you. For your free, no pressure consultation, call us today at 623-5559. Ready, set, ergo. The game plan is to make banking convenient for you. Ergo Bank has locations in Marquezan and Fox Lake with interactive teller machines in five different communities. And at all locations, speak with a live teller and conduct most in-branch transactions by transferring, withdrawing, or depositing. That's better banking by design. Open 7A to 7P Monday through Friday, 7 to noon on Saturdays. Call them today at 920-398-2336 or visit ErgoBank.com. Ergo Bank, an equal housing lender and member FDIC. Shop the bank! Fox Brothers Piggly Wiggly in Beaver Dam has everything you need to keep your family happy and healthy. From pampered to perfection produce to boar's head deli meats and cheeses, Fox Brothers award-winning brats and certified Angus beef. If it's not certified, it's not the best. Be sure to go online at Fox Bros Piggly Wiggly and find the latest weekly flyer full of savings and follow them on Facebook to learn more about their upcoming events. Shop local and save at Fox Brothers Piggly Wiggly in Beaver Dam. You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show presented by John Deere. The Beaver Dam Unified School District is one of the largest employers in the region. Their compensation and benefit packages are among the most competitive in the area. If you have a passion for serving children or know someone who does, please consider applying to be a part of a great team that works together in common purpose on behalf of our kids and our community. Mike Tronson with you on the John Deere pregame show. Just minutes away from the opening tap of this Badger East boys basketball game. It's Beaver Dam hosting Wanakee, the Golden Beavers and the Warriors. Beaver Dam at 3-5 and five overall, 1-3 and three in the conference. Wanakee 5-3 and three overall and a perfect 3-0 and oh in Badger East conference play. We'll have the starting lineups for you in just a moment. Opening tip just a few moments away, but uh, we're going to keep it here. And our Star Spangled Banner tonight being performed by the Beaver Dam High School Pep Band. We're all playing tonight as the Pep Band, Beaver Dam High School Pep Band, under the direction of Colin Gillis, presents our national anthem. And the National Anthem by the Beaverdam High School Pep Band under the direction of Colin Gallitz. 
Here are the starting lineups for tonight's game. First for the Wanakee Warriors, coached by Dana McKenzie in his 20th year at the on the bench. 316 wins, 147 losses. The guards are Shea Ducharme, a 6'3 inch senior, along with Jake Bova, a 6'3 junior. Devin Johnson, 6'3 and a senior. And a guard slash forward, Keaton Frisch, a 6'7 inch junior. And rounding out the starting five for the Warriors is Owen Elliott, a 6'3 junior. Again, it's Shea Ducharme, Jake Bova, Devin Johnson, Keaton Frisch, and Owen Elliott getting the start for Wanakee. Now the starters for Beaverdam, coached by Tim Ladron in his 15th year on the bench. 207 wins and 141 losses is his complete overall record. The guards are Parker Stoby, 5'9 inch sophomore, along with J.T. Call, a 6' foot junior, and Caleb Schmuel, 6 feet tall and a senior, Forwards include Cam Mendoza. He's a 6'3 junior along with Jack Jens, a 6'3 junior as well. So again, for the Golden Beavers, Parker Stoby, JT Call, Caleb Schmuel, Cameron Mendoza, and Jack Jens getting the start tonight for the Golden Beavers. For those of you on the radio that can't see it, Beaver Dam in the home white jerseys and shorts, the green numbers and the green and gold trim. Wanakee in purple jerseys and shorts tonight, white numbers and trim. In the first half of play, Wanakee goes left to right as I see it. Beaverdam right to left. Our game brought to you by our presenting video sponsors, Columbus Family Dental, Hometown Glass and Improvement, and the Beaverdam Unified School District. Tonight's game also brought to you by John Deere Horicon Works, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Air Care, Richards Insurance, Metalcraft of Mayville, Landmark Credit Union, Jerry's Automotive, McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Ergo Bank, Great Harvest Bakery Cafe, Surefire, Fox Brothers Piggly Wiggly, Preferred Dental Partners, Slumberland, and Kraft Heinz. We're ready to get this game underway. Send me an email tonight, sports at dailydodge.com. Sports at dailydodge.com. I'll take your name, where you're from, who you're cheering for. We'll give you a shout-out during the broadcast tonight as the ball off the center jump was knocked out of bounds, last touched by Mendoza of Beaver Dam. So it's going to be Wanakee with the first possession of the night. And here we go as the Warriors bring it from left to right. Beaver Dam's out in man-to-man -man defense. And here is a drive into the right block, and a shot is up. Off the rim, it won't go. Stoby rebounds the miss from Devin Johnson and sends it ahead. This is J.T. Call trying a three ball. Bullseye! J.T. Call from downtown Beaver Dam. Good start for the home team. They lead it 3-0 on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. I also want to thank John Deere for sponsoring our pregame show tonight. Less than a minute gone by here in the opening stands of 3-0 Beaverdam, but it's early, and there is a traveling violation called on Ducharme. A little spin move, and then he got rid of it, but he was called for the travel, and so that early turnover will give it to Beaverdam. But, yeah, send us an email. I'll check the email box here in just a moment, sports at dailydodge.com. We always like hearing from you and interacting with you during our broadcast. We'll take Beaverdam fans. We'll take Wanakee fans. We'll take fans of any team, any sport, we're equal opportunity. All right, one minute gone by. Golden Beavers have the Rock in a 3-0 lead early. Mendoza, top of the key. Had it knocked out of his hands. Call, though, takes it back. Call working on and gets it to Mendoza, who drives in, and Mendoza scores. It is 5-0 Beaver Dam with a minute and 20 seconds gone here in the opening half of play. Here is a drive and a pass intercepted. That was uh, Jake Bova that was trying to go dish it off to a teammate near the basket, and the pass was intercepted. Stoby now gives it to Call. Call working right side. He's inside the arc. Back out to Mendoza, a little pump fake near the top of the silo. Now takes off. He's worked on defensively by Frisch. Over to Jack Jens. Jens, lob pass corner. Mendoza kicks it out of there. Here's Schmuel now. Underhands it right back to Mendoza. Sends it out right side, long three for Call. got it! JT Call from the parking lot. He's got two triples to start the game and it's an eight nothing run for the Golden Beavers to start this one. With it now is Elliott. He's directing traffic near the top of the bubble. Takes the dribble, now sends it right side. And they go back around the horn. Here's a three from the left elbow. It's off the mark, no good. Offensive rebound, Elliott off the miss by, Dush by uh, Frisch, rather. And now here's Ducharme into the lane. Kicks it to the corner. Three balls on the way from the left corner. Yes, it is good. That is Keaton Frisch. Frisch, 
about 17% from behind the arc this year. Average is 8.8 a game. That gets the Warriors on the board. 8-3, Beaver Dam by five. There's Cole with a one-handed shot off the glass. Took the dish, went down low, finished strong with the right hand. It's 10-3. Beaver Dam by seven. And a ball almost stolen away, but Frisch has it. Lob over to Ducharme now. Ducharme just above the free throw line, elevates and scores. Tough shot, but he made it look easy. Ducharme averaging right around 10 points a game this season. And it's a 10-5 Beaver Dam lead on the John Deere Horicon Work scoreboard. And we are now a couple of minutes in. A little more than three minutes gone by here in the first half. Schmuel for three. Off the rim, no good. Fighting for the rebound. Frisch actually gives it to Bova. And Jake Bova across the midcourt stripe. Feeds it into the right corner for Ducharme. Back up top now. Here's Elliott leaving it off for Bova. Bova being hassled by Schmuel defensively. And now Owen Elliott up between the rings. Sends it off to the near wing side again for Ducharme. Spins and now gives it right back to Elliott. Elliott just above the free throw line. Out to Bova who drives down low on the right side. We've got a whistle and a foul coming up on Beaver Dam. Our officials tonight, we have a father-son team out there. Trent Haldeman and his dad, Tim Haldeman, my football partner and sometimes basketball and hockey partner on Daily Dodge TV. Kyle Klink is the third official tonight. So uh, good to have them here. And there's a tip ball out of bounds, last touch by the Golden Beavers. Tim Haldeman came up, was chatting with us before the game. I thought, you're not here to broadcast with me, are you? He said, nope. He says, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't be caught dead doing that. Well, no, maybe he would. But anyways, here we go. This is Devin Johnson sending it up to Frisch, high on the right. Return feed for Ducharme. He'll a little step back shot from inside the top of the bubble. No good, but the rebound, an offensive board for Johnson. Here is Bova to the top of the key. Ducharme leaves it off now for Johnson again. Johnson driving into the lane, puts on the brakes. A little fade away. No good off the rim. Jens has the defensive rebound. All right, we are four and a half minutes in to the contest. And right now, Beaver Dam doubling up one a key on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. It's 10 to 5, Golden Beavers. Beaver Dam started the game on an 8 0 run. Call off a screen. Hesitation. One hands it out to Stoby. Stoby right of the circle, back to Schmuel between the rings. Now here's Schmuel on the drive. Out to Stoby in the corner, up to call. Sends it into the lane. Head and shoulder fake. Mendoza puts it up, and it's going to go for Cameron Mendoza. Ah, a little head and shoulder fake there. Got the defenders in the air, then he was able to put it up and get the friendly bounce. 12 to 5. Beaver Dam with a seven point advantage on your John Deere Horicon work scoreboard. Five minutes, 10 seconds gone in the first half. Spin move, a nice pass down to Johnson. Head and shoulder fake. Johnson missed the layup and the rebound for Stoby. Everything but the finish there as Johnson had a look in close, just couldn't get it to go. Glad you're with us on this Thursday evening. Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome back to Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN. Call with a drive. Missed the layup, though, too strong off the glass. And this is Owen Elliott. Gets it to Johnson, who misses a three from the left side. And as they were fighting for the rebound, we're going to have a whistle and a foul. That'll be the first foul of the game on Wanaki. Jens has the lone foul thus far for Beaver Dam with 12-19 to go in the first half. This email says, let's go BD. Also, happy birthday to Kellen Schmuel, Caleb's little brother. Wish I was there tonight, but the doctor told me no. That's from Michelle. Michelle Litzer. And Michelle, I see that you're recovering uh, tonight at home, and uh, I wish you a very speedy recovery. Can't wait to see you back here real soon. I hope that uh, everything is going well for you. Thanks for the email. I'll get to some more here in a moment. This is Stoby for three. Yes. Nothing but net. Parker Stoby. That's the third triple of the game for the Golden Beavers, who lead it by 10. 15 to 5 with 11.49 left until intermission on your John Deere Horicon work scoreboard. Vance Johnson out there now for Wanaki. Checked in a moment ago. Ducharme puts it up, scores. Tough shot. Nice elevation. He's got four. 15 to 7. Want a key within eight now.
Eli Selk also checked in for Wanakee. 6'3 sophomore, the son of former Randolph standout Tyler Selk. There's a name many of you remember from around the area. There is a three ball no good for Stoby, and Ducharme has the rebound. Ducharme had it knocked out of his hands and stolen. Here comes call back the other way. Call Now let's traffic go by. Thought about a three, didn't take it. Gives it to Stoby. He'll try the three. It's in and out. No good. Rebound tipped to Schmuel. Schmuel up and under. Blocked. And it was taken away by Selk. Eli Selk with the block and takes it away. Here come the Warriors. 10.45 now left to go in the first half. 15-7. Beaverdam maintains the eight-point lead on the John Deere Horicon work scoreboard. Garrett Lenzendorf, 6'1 senior, out there for head coach Dana McKenzie and the Warriors. Beaver Dam, all the starters still in there. And here is a ball fake. Selk, bounce pass, nice pass to the weak side, and there's Vance Johnson cutting in for two. Johnson with a bucket, Selk with a nice assist, 15 to nine. So the Beaver Dam lead is at six. As we approach the 10 minute mark and counting of the first half on the John Deere Horicon work scoreboard. Schmuel, baseline left side, kicks it to the corner, right side, three ball. Yes for JT Call. It's third triple, timeout one a key, brought to you by Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Let our family take care of your family. It is a 30 second timeout, we'll keep it here. And let's get to some more emails that have uh, come in. Again, you can email us at sports at dailydodge.com. Sports at dailydodge.com. I'll take your name, where you're from, who you're cheering for. This one says cheering for the Beaver Dam boys from Sun Prairie. That's from our good friend Diane Storhoff. Diane, happy new year to you. Thanks for the email. Let's see here. And this one says go Beavers. And number five, Caleb Schmuel. And if you could please wish his brother Kellen a happy birthday tonight. Thank you so much. That's from Mama Schmuel, it says. And, yes, happy birthday, uh, Kellen. That's, uh, that's the second time I've mentioned it because uh, that other email came in from Michelle Litzer and uh, mentioned the same thing. So you've got a lot of fans there, buddy. Again, sports at dailydodge.com is where you'll find us tonight. Please feel free to send us an email. Back to live action now. There's a shot up, missed short, and getting his own rebound was Bova. Bova now in the left corner, guarded by Jens. Up to the top of the arcs, three-pointer. It's no good for Caden McKenzie. That's uh, Coach Dana McKenzie's son. Rebound for the Golden Beavers as Call sends it ahead. Out there now for Beaver Dam is E.J. Salatel, six-foot freshman, and we've got a whistle. He had checked in a moment ago. Also checking in just a moment ago for Beaver Dam, Quentin Cabreta, six-foot, four-inch senior. Where's number 11? For those of you watching on the Daily Dodge TV video stream. We've got a stoppage with 9.23 to go first half. Beaver Dam inbounding. Jens on the baseline to my left finds call up top. Little lob pass near the center circle taken by Cabreta. Now right back to call. Bounce pass top of the silo taken by Mendoza. Hands it to Jens. He faked a three. Jens on the drive through a double team. Out to call. Another three ball. And he got another one. JT call. His fourth three-point basket. He's got 14 of Beaver Dam's 21 points. And it's 21 to nine, Golden Beavers on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. What did he have for lunch today? Oh my, there's a three on the way. It's no good for Frisch. Here come the Golden Beavers. He's, I mean, he averages 13 points a game. He's got 14 already. And we still have 8.38 to go until halftime as we've got a whistle. Yeah, you know, some nights you, you some nights you you get in the zone. You know? He's in a zone right now. He's feeling it. Well, if you're enjoying this, we've got more basketball for you tomorrow night. Tomorrow night the Beaver Dam girls travel to Watertown. We'll be there on Daily Dodge TV. And is that one on ESPN tomorrow night too? 1430 ESPN for the simulcast. Seven o'clock pregame tomorrow night. 715 for the tip. Beaver Dam girls basketball against Watertown. Should be a fun one as the Golden Beavers battle the Goslings. But tonight we've got boys hoops. Here's Jens, top of the arc, and he will drive down the lane. Underhanded shot, missed it short. Might have been partially blocked by Elliott. And here come the Warriors. This is 
Johnson for three, off the rim, no. And nice defensive rebound for Call underneath the basket. A couple of wanna keep players tried to rip it away. Call out now to Cabrera, back to Mendoza at the free throw line, out to Call, step back three, off the rim, no, that almost went. <laughs> I mean, he didn't miss that by much. 7.45 left in the first, and they did a great job here by Beaver Dam to start the game against a really, really good wanna key team. I mean, Defensively, then pretty good so far. And boy, it helps when you've got good shooting and three point shots are falling. And right now, JT Call with four of Beaverdam's five three point baskets. And here is a drive and a pass to Johnson in the right corner. Now sent back up for Ducharme. He's hassled by Cabreda. And their pass crossword almost intercepted by Jens. They go right back to Ducharme for three on the right wing. It's off the rim, no good. Rebound tipped around, and we're going the other way. Johnson was fighting for it, but it looks like they're going to get him for contact. No, beg your pardon. It was not 20. It was two. Keaton Frisch picks up the infraction. So looking at the foul situation right now, you've got four on one a key, and just one thus far on the Golden Beavers. Seven minutes and change left to go first half on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Beaverdam 21 and Wanakee 9. Jens looking down into the lane. There's Cabrera high off the glass. He missed the shot. Frisch the rebound. Keaton Frisch back the other way and lost the handle on it briefly, but gives it now to McKenzie. Caden McKenzie stops inside the arc. Lob pass left corner for Johnson over there. Johnson steps inside the bubble. Now gives it off to Elliott. Elliott, one-handed pass to the baseline. McKenzie head and shoulder fake. Missed the layup, but a foul. Nice. Talk about the high-low game there, threading the needle. That was a great pass. And McKenzie will head to the free throw line. All expenses paid. Foul was called on Cabreda. His first and the team's second. McKenzie's first free throw is up, and it is good. 21-10. to 6.31 10. left to play until halftime. Second free throw in and out. Schmuel the rebound. Coming up at halftime tonight, we're going to have a, uh, a look at some uh, dancers from the Elite Dance Center in Beaverdam. They'll be performing. Talk more about that as we get to halftime. There's Schmuel. Up to Salatel, now Jens. Jens gives it back to Schmuel near the top of the key. Johnson guarding him. Schmuel muscles his way in, missed the layup though, and Frisch has the defensive board. Exactly six minutes to go until intermission. 21 to 10, this kind of sounds like a football score. Beaverdam leading one a key on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Beaverdam opened the game on an 8-0 run. Right now they currently lead by 11. This is an offensive foul on Elliott as he knocked over Jens. Jens in position to take that one. And it's going to go back to Beaverdam. Got another email here. It says, good evening, Mike. Mike Trepto joining us again from Texas. A big shout-out to my stepson, Parker. He says, uh, love listening to you on my iPad. Mike, great to hear from you. Happy New Year, buddy. And It was great to see you a couple of weeks ago. I get the emails from you all the time, but it was actually great to see you in person. And we've got a whistle as Schmuel was into the front court. But, Mike, I hope you and the family had a wonderful Christmas and New Year's holiday. Send me an email, sports at dailydodge.com. Sports at dailydodge.com. Love to hear from you tonight. We'll give you a shout-out, as we do always. Nice pass to a cutting call, but he was underneath the basket. Out to Schmuel for three left side. Yes! Caleb Schmuel knocks down the triple. Sixth three of the game for the Golden Beavers. Their lead is at 14, 24 to 10. Well, hot shooting and good defense, and that's why they've got a 14-point lead. Head and shoulder fake. Shot is up. Shot is in. Nice job by Bova. And for Jake Bova, that is his first bucket of the game. He averages 12.3 a contest, I believe. He's the leading scorer on this Wanakee team right now, and that's his first bucket. Mendoza, head and shoulder fake, puts it off the glass, and he scores. Cameron Mendoza up to six now, 26 to 12. 
Beaver Dam with the advantage. Wanakee with the rock. 4.35 and counting left in the first half on your John Deere Horicon work scoreboard. Three ball on the way, Ducharme. Off the back rim, no. Long rebound. Tipped and grabbed by Stoby. Parker's got it. He'll bring it across. Throws it to Schmuel. Fakes the three. He's going to go baseline. A falling out of bounds. Tried to get it to call the pass. Was tipped by a Wanakee defender. Somebody got a hand on it. He went right into the Warriors bench. All right, so we've got a stoppage with 419 to go. In the opening stanza. This is Jens. Off a screen. Changes direction. Gives it back to Call. Call. Underhanded shot. Missed it wide. And the rebound for Selk. Selk back the other way. Fires it to the right corner. Sent out of there quickly. Frisch. Frisch down low. Attacking the basket. Missed the shot, but we've got a foul. Stopping things now with 3.55 left until intermission. Lob pass in. Now I just got a score texted to me from across the street at the hockey game. There's a ball out of bounds. And I want to know if this is actually correct or if it's a typo. But it says at the end of the first period across the street in boys hockey, it says Beaverdam 10, Milton nothing? Or, or is it supposed to be, now is that true or is it one nothing? I'm going to have to ask Big Jer about that who texted me that score. That would be a, a monster first period if they scored 10 goals in the first period. But you know, we saw them the other night, Ninja, they looked really good against McFarland, so maybe, maybe they did. Or maybe just Big Jer added an extra zero after the one. <laughs> it's either one nothing or it's 10 nothing, from what I'm reading on that. We'll get some clarification if we can. All right, three minutes and change left to go in the first half here. 26 to 12. Beaver Dam with a 14 point advantage on Wanakee. There's a foul. Oh my. JT call driving. Ducharme tried to establish position, and they called Ducharme for the block, and I don't think Dana McKenzie was a fan of that call. As he's speaking right now with Tim Haldeman, one of our officials. I don't think Dana's going to win the argument, unfortunately. All right, 3.04 to go, and the first free throw is no good for J.T. Call. Call with those four big three-pointers here in the first half. He also had a two-point basket. So he's got 14 of Beaverdam's 26 points. Second free throw, no good. Missed them both. Clock running, three minutes to go first half. Frisch guarded by Mendoza. Mendoza's all over him. Frisch looking for help. Gives it to Selk. Now back to Johnson. Johnson just inside the center circle. Takes off against Schmuel. Lob pass. Frisch down in the left corner. He's going to try and go baseline. Mendoza there to greet him. Back to Selk. Selk looking into the lane. There's McKenzie. Spins up and under. McKenzie fouled. That's going to stop things here with... Okay, I just got a text. Yes, that is, that is correct. It is 10 to nothing... At the hockey game, at the end of one, Beaverdam leading Milton. My brother-in-law just uh, verified that for me. First free throws up and good for McKenzie. And, hey, when we were there Tuesday night, they only scored four times in the first period. What gives? They couldn't score six more times for us when we broadcast the game? Second free throw is also good. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. 26 to 14. 12-point Beaverdam lead on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Golden Beavers just turned it over, and the ball was loose, but grabbed by Wanakee. They got a timeout. Timeout brought to you by Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Let our family take care of your family. 2.25 left in the first half. It's a 30-second timeout, so we will uh, keep it right here as we are rapidly approaching halftime. The Beaverdam Unified School District identifies a school of the month during the school year. A shout-out to the students, staff, and families of this month's school community being recognized 
Washington Elementary. Mike Tronson with you inside the field house. Justin Wilski, a.k.a. Ninja, is my videographer and engineer on site tonight. Kyra's back at the 1430 ESPN studios tonight engineering our radio simulcast. I certainly don't do this alone. Bat to live action. Want a key with possession. Here's McKenzie. Right block, Mendoza. He gets rid of it and a layup on the left side for Garrett Lenzendorf who kind of got some separation and got the basketball. He was wide open on the left doorstep. 10 point Beaver Dam lead, 26 to 16, just under two minutes left in the half. There is a loose ball and Wanakee thought they had possession there as Stobie had it knocked away and they were saying that it was, the, the Wanakee bench was all up in arms saying that, that went off of them. Well, the official did not see it that way. That's a break for Beaverdam, maybe. I mean, I'm, a, I'm 150 feet away, so I, I, I'm in no position to judge that one. 143 left in the half. Bounce pass down to the baseline call. Did he, have it, did he lose it himself? No, he was knocked out of bounds by a Wanakee defender. I believe that was uh, Selk that knocked it loose. The call will inbound on the baseline to my left. Lob pass in, and Salatel has it. EJ giving it off now to Stobie and Parker trying to get away from Self. Parker Stobie floats one up. It's off the mark. Too strong, actually. Rebound McKenzie. Minute 27 to go in the first half of play. Frisch on the right elbow. Down to the corner. Return feed up to Frisch. Thought about a three. Now he'll take the wide open three. He missed it short. Mendoza the rebound. And quickly a pass to Stobie. He'll trot across the midcourt stripe. With the 72 seconds now left in the first half. Salatel traveled. Warriors get it off the Golden Beaver turnover. Again, if you want to send us an email, we'd love to hear from you. Sports at dailydodge.com. Sports at dailydodge.com. Mike Trepto just emailed again. He says a shout out to the hockey team. Yeah. Beaverdam boys hockey team leading Milton 10 to nothing right now at the end of the first period. That's incredible. A 10 goal first period. Wow. What do they have for lunch today? My goodness, all those guys. All right, down to 43 seconds left in the first half here. And there's a ball not loose. Stolen. Cabrera has it. Back the other way against Johnson. Sidesteps Johnson. Layup. Count it for Cabrera. Oh, what a move. How about that? And it's 28-16. Incredible. Here's a three ball sell. Wait a minute. As the shot goes up, we had a, a whistle and a foul, an offensive foul on Wanakee. So that one's going to go on Owen Elliott. Eight fouls in the half on Wanaki. There are four in the half on the Golden Beavers. And now another whistle. What do we have? An illegal screen or? Trying to see what we got. Yeah, it's going back to one key. 10.1 seconds left in the half. Just getting some personnel set here. Well, I tell you what, if you're a Beaver Dam fan, you're probably liking this first half, and you should. If you're a one key fan, probably not what you were hoping for, but they play two halves and not one. There's a lot of basketball left, and this team is qual it's a quality team. They can get right back into it. No doubt about it. So Beaver Dam's going to try and keep its foot on the gas as the horn sounds. Wanakee's got some work to do at halftime as the horn sounds, and we go to the break with a score on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard, Beaver Dam 28 and Wanakee 16. Stay with us. We'll take a three-minute break. We're back for our halftime report in three minutes on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN. 
Deck the garage during the Big Finish sales event at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam, featuring the best deals of the year on the best vehicles in the market. Take five grand off brand new Ram 1500 Bighorn Crew Cabs and finance rates as low as 1.9%. Dodge Durango starting at 43219, Jeep Compass Trailhawks under 37 grand, and just arrived, the all new Jeep Grand Cherokee 4xE. Welcome to the Electric Revolution. Happy holidays, and thank you for allowing our family to take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam and ReedChrysler.com. What's in your kid's lunchbox today? Turkey and bacon on honey whole wheat? Roast beef on sourdough? PB&J on cinnamon chip with bananas? That is bananas, but that's what fresh baked breads from Great Harvest can do for you. Unleash your sandwich ingenuity. So show your kids some lunchbox love with chicken salad on cranberry orange bread, Italian on cheddar garlic bread. Then show everyone your creation at Instagram or Facebook using this hashtag, Great Harvest Bread, the way it ought to be. Is it time to update the bathroom? Then it's time to head to Hometown Glass and Improvement of Beaver Dam. Hometown has a full complement of Vasco shower enclosures. Hometown Glass makes your selection of enclosures easy, and they provide hassle-free installation. When you purchase a Basco shower enclosure, your expectations will be exceeded. Hometown Glass promises you a classy, elegant, and luxurious centerpiece for your bathroom. Hometown Glass and Improvement, Highway 33 east of Beaver Dam, on the web at hometownglass.com. Jerry's Automotive in Beaver Dam is a champion of our local schools. Team up with Jerry's Automotive by pumping your gas at their spirit pump, where two cents of every gallon is donated to a local school each month. Jerry's Automotive also provides exceptional vehicle service and repairs and a great selection of convenience items. Visit Jerry's Automotive Center WI.com and on Facebook. Jerry's Automotive, 700 North Spring Street in Beaver Dam, across the street from Beaver Dam Food Pride. Hi, my name is Michelle and I'm the plant manager for the Beaver Dam Kraft Heinz plant. I'm excited to share with you that we are rolling out new schedules to allow people more time with their families. Come meet me and my team and let us tell you about the exciting changes we are making to our schedules and our great benefits. Please go to careers.crafthinds.com, search by Beaver Dam and see all the opportunities we have available. We believe family time is important. Our new schedule will allow you to have a schedule that works for you and your family. All shifts are 12 hours with up to three to four days off per week. We offer shift differentials and premiums for weekend work at Kraft Heinz. For every, where's the grocery list? I'll go to the store. So you'll fill up my car on the way home? Moment. If it has to do with your life and your money, it's a landmark moment. And Landmark Credit Union is here to help. With free checking accounts that offer you the choice of getting paid dividends on your balance or earning rewards points on your purchases. Opening an account is fast and simple and gives you access to Credit Hub, powered by Savvy Money, which shows your credit score so you can keep your finances healthy. Landmark Credit Union. Visit LandmarkCU.com, insured by NCUA. Halftime inside the Beaver Dam High School Fieldhouse. Right now, dancers from the Elite Dance Center are performing here at halftime. This first routine right now is a hip-hop team routine called Let's Go. Elite Dance Center is located in Beaver Dam and has dancers from all around Dodge County. They'll be starting their competition season in February, traveling, and the, later this year, they'll be traveling to Ocean City, Maryland, uh, this summer to compete at Nationals. But this is the uh, hip-hop team routine. Again, it's called Let's Go. Those of you that are on the radio side unfortunately can't see it, but Ninja's doing some nice work with the Daily Dodge video TV camera and getting some shots of our dancers doing their thing. And I tell you, I could never do that. <laughs> even, even when I was in shape years ago, I, I couldn't have done that. Uh, this next routine now is going to be Beaver Dam High School sophomore Manny Wilkie performing his hip-hop solo, Manny's Mama's Mix. It says it's an old-school throwback. So those of you on the video side, he's getting a nice ovation too. Manny Wilkie, Beaver Dam High School sophomore with his hip-hop solo, Manny's Mama's Mix. He's pretty good. <laughs> Right now it is 28 to 16 at the break. Beaver Dam leading Wanakee on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard as Manny is doing his routine. We're gonna run down some first half stats. That way we keep the folks on the radio side entertained because they can't see it. But uh, how about JT Call in the first half? He was on fire. 
as he had four three-point baskets, 14 points total. He leads all scorers in the game by a long shot. 14 points for JT. Cameron Mendoza with six in the first half for the Golden Beavers. Parker Stoby and Caleb Schmuel with three points each. They both had a three-point basket in that first half. And Quentin Cabrera rounded out the scoring with two. Meanwhile, for Wanakee, they were led by Shea Ducharme with four. Couple players with three points each. Uh, Caden McKenzie had three free throws. He finished the half with three. Keaton Frisch had a triple. He finished the half with three. Several players with two points each. Jake Boba, Garrett Lenzendorf, and Vance Johnson. All with two points apiece for the Warriors. And uh, Beaver Dam started the game on an 8-0 run, and they have uh, you know, pretty much for the most part kept their foot on the gas ever since. I mean, it was a combination of a couple things. We talked about, you know, it really helps when, you've, uh, when you're finding some uh, shots to drop offensively, and certainly JT Call was, but, I mean, really he had four threes. Beaver Dam had six three-pointers in the first half. So hot three-point shooting and some pretty darn good defense. That's a recipe for success. That's why they're ahead by 12. Now, as I said right before halftime, you know, if you're a Beaver Dam fan, you're, you you got to be pleased with that, but you got to keep your foot on the gas. If you're Wana Key, this game is not over, not by a long shot. And I've seen enough Wana Key basketball over the years to know how good they are, and they are capable of getting back into this. So if you're Wana Key, you don't want to panic. Nice round of applause for Manny Wilkie there on his hip-hop solo. And again, those are the performers from the Elite Dance Center located in Beaver Dam. And they have dancers from all around Dodge County. Again, they're starting their competition season in February and then traveling to Ocean City, Maryland this summer to compete in nationals. But a nice job, nice round of applause for those performers out there tonight at halftime. 28-16, Beaver Dam on top of Wanakee at the break. Uh, tell you what, we'll take a break right now, but uh, when we come back, we'll get to some more emails that have come in. And we'll get you ready for the second half right after this three-minute break. We'll take a three-minute break and back after this, Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN. Hi, this is Sandy from McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam. We are proud to support all area athletes. While at home watching or listening to your favorite sports team, why not be comfortable? McKinstry's is a Lazy Boy comfort studio. We have sofas, recliners, sectionals, and reclining sofas in stock and ready for prompt delivery. Stop into McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam and add comfort to your home. Year after year, McKinstry. Welcome back to our live coverage of Stunt Magician Merlin Wormwood, brought to you by Surefire, your leading local installer of Lennox Home Comfort Systems. That's right, Matilda. Merlin Wormwood has locked himself in his mother's basement and is refusing to install a Lennox Home Comfort System from Surefire until she promises to start making him pizza bagels every Friday evening. Chuck, I'm sorry. How is this stunt magic? Isn't this just a lame protest? Mm, have you tried his mom's pizza bagels? They're incredible. When we come back, what's the secret behind Merlin's mother's pizza bagels? And the latest weather report with Surefire, up next. With a finance plan to fit every budget, today is the time to upgrade to new Lennox Home Comfort System from Surefire, your local Lennox premier dealer. Online at surefireinc.com. Be sure Looking for a change? A new career that checks all of the boxes? Excellent benefits? A great team culture? And plenty of room to grow? Metalcraft of Mayville is looking for candidates like you to fill openings in Mayville, West Bend, and Beaver Dam. Metalcraft truly believes employees make the difference, offering paid training, top wages, and a regularly sanitized, safe workplace. Apply today at mtlcraft.com. Metalcraft of Mayville. American drivers overpay an average of $368 per year on their auto insurance. Why? Because, well, insurance is hard. It's complicated. It's time-consuming to get quotes from multiple companies, so we overpay. Or we call Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. Make one call and receive a quote from a great company like Auto Owners Insurance. The team at Richards Insurance will literally do all the work for you. So if you could be saving money each month with an Auto Owners Insurance policy, 
You'll know about it. How much will you save with Richard's Insurance? To find out, call Richard's Insurance or stop in at 123 North Spring Street, downtown Beaver Dam. With offices in Columbus, Watertown, West Bend, and Oshkosh. With over 50 employees and hundreds of years insurance experience across five offices, you'll get full service counseling with no obligation. Your auto owner's insurance carrier is Richard's Insurance in Beaver Dam. Call 887-1615. We'll be there with you. Richard's Insurance of Beaver Dam. Back inside the Beaver Dam High School Fieldhouse, Mike Tronson with you on Daily Dodge TV and simulcasting on 1430 ESPN. We're at halftime of this Badger East Conference showdown. And just about ready to start the second half, as a matter of fact, with Beaver Dam on top of Wanakee, 28 to 16 on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Again, you can send us an email tonight, sports at dailydodge.com. Sports at dailydodge.com is where you'll find us tonight. We'll take your name and where you're from, who you're cheering for. Love to hear from you. And the fact that this email just came in, it says, uh, hi there, just want you to know that you're doing a great Terrific job with broadcasting the basketball game. Well, well, that's very nice of you to say. This is, it says, I am Shay Ducharme of Wanakee's uncle, and I'm currently on South Padre Island in Texas, enjoying the broadcast very much. Thank you so much. You're amazing. That's from Tom Marshall. Well, first of all, Tom, you're making me blush, and uh, I really appreciate it. That's a very kind thing to say. I really appreciate the nice words, and I'm glad you're enjoying the broadcast because, as I say all the time, we don't do this for ourselves, and Ninja and Kyra and I, we, we do it for you. We do it for these, these kids, these programs, for all of you, family, friends, the fans of the program, and uh, hey, I hope you're having a great time down in uh, Texas. Uh, safe travels to you, and uh, Happy New Year. But Tom, thank you very much for that very, very nice email. I uh, do appreciate it very much. Glad you're enjoying it tonight. Uh, second half just about to get underway. We'll get to some more emails as they roll in. If you want to sneak one in, during the second half, we'll have time for you. And another score just texted to me. Standing room only in Fall River tonight. Fall River leads Randolph 31 to 30 at halftime. Carter Meredith hit a three pointer at the buzzer to pull within one at the half for Randolph. So yeah, Bruce, my brother-in-law sending me that update. Thanks Bruce, keep them coming. All right, second half getting underway, Wanakee on defense as Beaverdam has the ball to start the second half. In the second half, the Golden Beavers move left to right as I see it. For those of you on radio, Schmuel one hands one up and in. And that means Wanakee's going right to left across your radio dial or your daily Dodge TV video screen. Ball bounced around like a pinball out of bounds off of Wanakee. And so it'll go back to the Golden Beavers off the Warriors turnover. I don't have the turnover stats in front of me, but want a key with some turnovers in that first half that certainly hurt him a little bit, but credit Beaver Dam doing a nice job defensively in this one against a really talented want a key team that's capable of putting points on the board as uh, Beaver Dam just lost it out of bounds. I mean, you look at these, look at this want a key squad. I mean, they're, they're capable of Rattling off quite a few points in any given night. But Beaver Dam's held them down here, to, at least to this point. 30-16, to 16, Golden Beavers on top on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Less than a minute gone by second half. Well, right on cue, as I'm saying. Beaver Dam's holding them down. Shea Ducharme hits the three ball from the right corner. And it's 30-19 to 19 as the Warriors are back within 11, but Ducharme... Little arcing rainbow shot from the corner. Nails it. Jens with a one-hander in the lane. That's off the rim. No. And the rebound for Vance Johnson. Or Devin Johnson, I should say. And the uh, turnover gives it right back to Beaver Dam. As here comes Schmuel into the front court. This is Schmuel for three at the top of the bubble. Bullseye! How about that guy? Caleb Schmuel with his second triple. He's got eight points in the game, and that is now seven three-pointers in the game for Beaver Dam. 
They lead it 33 to 19. Nice pass on the right doorstep. Jake Bova was there for an easy layup and a timeout called. 32nd timeout. Wanaki calls the timeout. Brought to you by the good folks at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Let our family take care of your family. We'll keep it here on this 32nd timeout. Again, a reminder, tomorrow night we have Beaverdam girls basketball for you on Daily Dodge TV and simulcasting on 1430 ESPN. We'll get the band back together tomorrow night. We'll head down to Watertown, not too far from here. Short drive to the south, and tomorrow night the Beaverdam girls take on the Watertown Goslings in Badger East play. Our pregame show, the John Deere pregame show, starts at around 7 o'clock. Tip time tomorrow night at approximately 7.15. If you can't make it to Watertown, you just come right back here where you are tonight, and you'll find us with that game tomorrow night. Should be a lot of fun. Beaverdam girls' first game back in Wisconsin after their recent trip down to Tennessee where they played last week. We were there. We know. Hope you tuned in if you couldn't make that 660-mile drive down to Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Here is Jens. Mendoza in the corner now. Fires it up to call. Top of the key. Sidesteps the defender. Going down low. Gets to the baseline, but then there's Bova to greet him. Bounce pass now on the right wing to Mendoza. He goes in towards the rack, and he scores. Lays it up. And in, Cameron Mendoza, 35-21. Beaverdam leads Wanakee on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. 15-20 and counting left in the second half. Here is a three-pointer from the left corner. Yes, that's Devin Johnson knocking down the trifecta. 35-24. Wanakee within 11. A lot of time left here, 15-04 to go in the second half tonight. Beaverdam's trying to stop a four-game losing streak. Wanakee's trying to uh, keep their winning streak going. I think they've won uh, three in a row coming into this one. Here's Jens for three. Off the rim, no. Bova has the defensive rebound. He'll bring it back the other way. Now Ducharme. Double team. Bounce pass to back to Bova. Cutting right baseline. And a tough angle. He banks it off the glass and in. Bova with a couple of buckets here in the second half. And just like that, the deficit down to single digits. It's 35-26, Beaverdam on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Jens was fouled on his way down the floor. I think they're going to get Owen Elliott here. Got to thank this nice gentleman in front of me here on the bleachers who gave me a bottle of water. He turned around. He must have heard my broadcasting. This, guy's need, this guy needs some water. <laughs> he doesn't sound very good. I got to give him some water. No, I appreciate it very much. Better than a lot of the other things I could be drinking up here. Here is Stoby. Mendoza has it. Far sideline right in front of his own bench. He's guarded there by Frisch. Mendoza, lob pass right corner call. Quickly sends it up to Schmuel on the elbow. Schmuel attacking the basket, and he puts it up off the glass. Count it, and a foul. It's the hoop and the harm, and Caleb Schmuel has a chance for an old-fashioned three-point play. That restores a double-digit lead, 37-26 for the Golden Beavers. And the foul was on Frisch, his second, team second of the half. Free throw's up, free throw is no good. Rebound pulled down by Vance Johnson. Want to key down by 11. They've got the rock. As I mentioned, plenty of time here. With it is Caden McKenzie. Bounce pass up to Ducharme. They work it around the horn. Selk in the left corner. Sends it out. Now McKenzie, high on the right. Puts the ball above his head. Back over to Bova. Bova return feed on the right side for Ducharme. Now he directs traffic inside the center circle. Giving it off now for Johnson. Johnson, the lob pass out to Bova. He'll try a three ball. Off the back rim, no. Offensive board. That's Ducharme. He's fouled. We've got a foul. Going to stop play with 13.29 to go in the second half. Caleb Schmuel is guilty of the infraction. All right, they get it in. Johnson, left corner three, money. That is Devin Johnson. 
He's heating up. He's got a couple of triples here in the second half. 37-29 pulls the Warriors to within eight on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Not quite five minutes into the second half. Here's a bounce pass. Mendoza on the give and go back to Cole. And wait a minute, before the shot, we've got a foul on the floor. Yeah, Mendoza and Call they were trying to work that little give and go there. Foul called. And Caden McKenzie picked up that foul. Here comes E.J. Salatel back into the lineup. A six-foot freshman. And the lob pass in taken by Quentin Cabrera. Now Schmuel double teamed on the left baseline. Threw, tried to throw it back up to Stobie. It was intercepted. McKenzie intercepts the pass. He'll trot the other way. Now Ducharme up on the right elbow. Thought about a three. Sends it to the corner. Here's a three ball from the corner. It's off the back rim. No. Offensive board. That is McKenzie. Puts it up and muscles it up and in. Caden McKenzie makes it 37-31. to 31. This is as close as Wanakee's been in quite some time. Six-point Beaverdam lead. 12 and a half minutes to go in the ball game on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard and a five count on Mendoza. Ah, you sense the momentum shifting here. And it has over the last couple of sequences here. One a key within six and they've got the rock. They were down 12 at the half. They've cut it to six. Cross court feed, McKenzie. Being guarded there by Schmuel. He's now double teamed. Gets rid of it. Ducharme sidesteps the defender. One-handed pass to Selk in the left corner. Selk's three is off the back rim. No. Johnson the offensive rebound. It's a reload for the Warriors. They've got a, a nice bounce in their step here now. They're back within six. This is Selk. Bounce pass inside the bubble. They return feed. Selk tries a three. No good. Box out and rebound for Salatel. Johnson was behind him, but a nice box out for Salatel to get the defensive ricochet. Stoby now being hassled defensively by McKenzie. Stoby gets it to Salatel high on the left. 11.38 to go in the ball game. Now Mendoza feeds Stoby between the circles. Sends it right corner. Schmuel down there with his neon green tennis shoes. If the power goes out, we'll know where he is. Now Parker Stoby also has some neon yellow or greenish shoes. And we have a whistle and a foul. Those of you that follow Beaverdam basketball, you, you know I used to love to uh, comment on Br uh, Brady Helbing's pink shoes that he wore <laughs> the last couple of years. Those were, uh, those were some of my faves. These are next in line here. These are pretty good too. All right, 37-31. We had a foul called on one a key. It was on Selk. His second, team's fourth. And we're going to have a foul here on McKenzie, who was trying to knock that one away from Parker Stobie. Cabrera is going to inbound right in front of the scorer's table. And he'll find Stobie behind the timeline. He'll bring it right back across. Met by McKenzie. Bounce pass, top of the key. Call over to Jens. Jens passing up the shot. Now gives it back to Call. Call dancing up near the midcourt stripe. Want a key in man to man coverage. Cabrera taking off right side, going down low. Whips it to the corner. Salatel for three. It's short. And that rebound is going to be grabbed by McKenzie. 10.39 to go in the ballgame. McKenzie, nice pass to the left doorstep. And bobbled by Elliott, but there were two defenders right there, and somebody's going to get called for a foul. Let's see who it is. Is that Call, maybe? Yes. J.T. Call with the foul. Hey, it's Beaverdam 12-0 now, leading Milton after the second period in boys hockey. That game going on at the Family Center across the street. It was 10-0 at the end of the first period. The Golden Beavers added two more in the second. Now lead by a dozen going into the final period. All right, here is Frisch. Double team left block. We've got a whistle. Another foul here. Cabrera just picked up a foul. 
Again, if you want to sneak an email in before the end of the broadcast, sports at dailydodge.com. Sports at dailydodge.com. I do have one in the hopper. I'll get to it in just a moment. Right now, want a key within six, looking to cut the deficit down to four or less on this possession. Here's Boba. Traveling violation on Boba. He was trying to get away and sidestep Cabreda. And that turnover will give it back to the Golden Beavers as we approach now the 10-minute mark and counting of the second half. 37-31, Beaverdam leads Wanakee on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Been a good one tonight. They usually are. A lot of entertaining games when, when Badger East teams get together. Schmuel not able to get a shot off, and now they now foul to boot. Check this one out here. Yeah, Jake Bova guilty of that one. That's his third uh, team foul number six on the Warriors. Hope you're enjoying this one tonight here on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN. This is our first basketball broadcast of the uh, 2023 calendar year. It's good to be back in Wisconsin, but, boy, our crew, we had a great time in Tennessee last week following the Beaver Dam girls. And uh, they, there's a whistle and a foul. Beaver Dam girls went to Murfreesboro, Tennessee, just outside of Nashville last week. Played three games at the State Farm Classic. They uh, won two out of three. Their only loss was to the defending 4A Tennessee State champs, but you know what? They, they had a good showing nonetheless. And uh, Justin, Kyra, and myself, we were there to witness it and bring it to you. Had a great time. Jens is at the line, by the way. Front end of the bonus is no good. Johnson with the rebound after that uh, foul was called on Selk, his third team seventh. Now, a great time down there in Nashville. The weather after the first day or so was nice. and We, uh, we had a good time. We had a good time. Wish we could have stayed a little longer even, but can't stay down there forever. And there is McKenzie being sandwiched between a couple of defenders. One of them fell down. That was Schmuel. I got to thank uh, Justin Wilski for uh, all his good work down there in Tennessee and all his good work every night. And Kyra was fantastic as well. I mean, they were troopers. Ian the Mercer. There's a ball knocked loose by Cabrera. Deflected it right to Jens. Turnover. Here come the Golden Beavers leading by six. Nine minutes left in the game. On your John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. And ball out of bounds. Last touch, they say, by Frisch. And Wanakee. Yeah, I got home Friday afternoon to my house about 3 o'clock. An hour and a half later, my wife and I were in her car driving to Minneapolis for the weekend. <laughs> so I went from Nashville to Southern Illinois Thursday night, then Southern Illinois to Beaver Dam on Friday, then right up to Minneapolis. There's a three. No good from the top of the key. Jen's missed. I had to do a delayed family Christmas with my side of the family last weekend. We missed it the week before because of the bad weather. Here's Frisch to the corner. Three ball. Ducharme off the back rim. No. Johnson had the rebound ripped away by Call. We've been stuck on 37-31 for a little while now. Here's a drive. Salatel floater. It's off the rim. No. Jens the offensive board. Put back. No, it's blocked. Blocked by Frisch. And the loose ball. McKenzie. Now McKenzie had it knocked away. He was falling out of bounds. Did he save it? Yes, Ducharme. Throws it ahead. It's getting wild now with 8.09 to go. All right, now just settling things down just a little bit. Here's McKenzie. He's going down towards the baseline. Now sends it back up for Vance Johnson. To McKenzie, three ball in the corner. Wait a minute, whistle first, and we're going the other way. And do we have a timeout? Or just subs here? Yeah, just substitutes right now coming in for both sides. Now we actually do have a timeout. Brought to you by Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Let our family take care of your family. Back in one minute, Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN. 
Deck the garage during the Big Finish sales event at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam, featuring the best deals of the year on the best vehicles in the market. Take five grand off brand new Ram 1500 Bighorn Crew Cabs and finance rates as low as 1.9%. Dodge Durango starting at 43219, Jeep Compass Trailhawks under 37 grand, and just arrived, the all new Jeep Grand Cherokee 4xE. Welcome to the Electric Revolution. Happy holidays and thank you for allowing our family to take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam and ReedChrysler.com. For every, where's the grocery list? I'll go to the store. So you'll fill up my car on the way home? Moment. If it has to do with your life and your money, it's a landmark moment. And Landmark Credit Union is here to help. With free checking accounts that offer you the choice of getting paid dividends on your balance or earning rewards points on your purchases. Opening an account is fast and simple and gives you access to Credit Hub, powered by Savvy Money, which shows your credit score so you can keep your finances healthy. Landmark Credit Union. Visit LandmarkCU.com, insured by NCUA. All righty, 7.52 remaining in the ball game. Beaver Dam inbounding after the timeout. Full court pressure by the Warriors. Golden Beavers lead Wanakee 37-31 on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Schmuel tipped the ball into the corner. Jen saves it. And then his pass was intercepted by Ducharme, who tried to flip it behind his back as he was falling out of bounds. It almost worked. <laughs> it almost worked, but Beaver Dam gets a break there. They'll keep possession. But <laughs> to Charm, oh, my goodness. For those of you on radio, I didn't do that justice because <laughs> he made a heck of an effort to try and save it. Almost worked. This is Cabreda. Cabreda backing up. Up high on the left, gives it to Schmuel. Schmuel, left sideline near the Beaver Dam bench. Feeds it to Jens in the corner. Return feed to Schmuel. Schmuel bobbled it underneath the basket. He's in trouble. To Cabrera. Oh, he tried to get it to Cabrera in the right corner, but instead it sails out of bounds. We got uh, some more emails coming in here. Let's see. This one says, great game. Thank you, Daily Dodge and your sponsors for making it possible to watch the game when we're away. And it says, we'll reach out to Surefire, Richards Insurance, Hometown Glass for services when we need them. We always shop at Piggly Wiggly. And uh, says, I'm sure I'm missing a sponsor. There's a shot is up and in. Count it. Frisch with a bucket there. But uh, just to finish that thought, he says, uh, all the parents should be proud of the young men you've raised. Go Beaver Dam. We love watching Parker and the whole team play. Grandma and Grandpa Stoby at the sunny white beaches of San Carlos, Sonoro, Mexico. Oh, my goodness. That sounds like a great place to be right now. But if you're not there, this is probably the second best place to be right now watching this game. 37-33 is the bucket by Frisch a moment ago. Pulled Wanakee to within four on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard, 6.32 remaining. But no, Grandma and Grandpa Stoby, enjoy Mexico, and thanks for the email. We do appreciate it. Uh, this one says, Rick Schmied watching from Arvada, Colorado, while visiting the sons and his sons and grandkids. Go Beavers! Thanks, Rick. Thank you very much. And again, if you want to sneak one in before the end of the game, sports at dailydodge.com is where you can send that message. 6.15 to go. Want a key with the rock and now trailing by just four. Three ball, Frisch. Yes! Keaton Frisch, rainbow three. And we've got a one-point game, 37-36. Now Schmuel for three. It's off the back rim. No, rebound knocked loose. And look out, a big collision over by the Beaver Dam bench, and it's actually saved. Bova got it for Wanaki. Now a three at the other end. It is short. Offensive board, Frisch for the lead. He banks it home. Elliott missed the three-pointer, but Frisch with the offensive board and the putback. Wanaki leads for the first time tonight, 38-37 with 5.33 to go. Jens fouled. So the Warriors, who have been down fighting back from in this one from the start, have their first lead, albeit a one-point advantage. But right now, Jack Jens is going to the line after Frisch picked up his third foul, team's eighth. This is two shots in and out on the first one for Jens. Jens averaging nine points a game. Coming into this game tonight, he was 19 of 27 from the line on the season. And we are in a dogfight right now. Oh, 
Jens with one more to tie the game up. We're tied. 38-38. We're all even. 5.26 to go. Don't leave your radio or your phone or your device, whatever you're watching. And there's a turnover. Here come the Golden Beavers. Stoby. Let's traffic go by. Feeds Mendoza. Mendoza now to the free throw line. Stops over there. Gives it back to Parker. He goes baseline. Kicks it back up. Call. Fakes a three. Now steps back. Still got the ball. JT. Big first half for JT, but he hasn't scored here in the second half. I mean, they've done some nice uh, adjustments. Uh, Want a key defensively. Now Cabrera, as the defender fell down, sends it over to Mendoza. He'll try a three ball off the rim. No. Cabrera, the offensive board. And he had, it, he had it knocked away. Actually, I think he was trying to pass it up to a team, and it was intercepted. And now Wanake with a chance to break the tie. 4.38 to go. Selk has it. Cross-court feed Boba out there in three-point land. Boba, little lob. M intended for McKenzie. Knocked loose. Stolen. This is Mendoza. Missed the layup. It came out. Boba, the rebound, throws it ahead to Johnson. How did that not go down? And now a whistle and a timeout, one a key. Brought to you by Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Let our family take care of your family. Is this a 30 or a 60, gentlemen? It is a full timeout. We're back in one minute. Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN. Are you ready for peace of mind? Chad Guzzi here, owner of Eric Aaron Beaver Dam. If you're tired of unexpected repair bills, you want to sign up for our total care plan. It ensures top performance and prolonged life of your heating and air conditioning equipment. AirCare's Total Care customers receive annual inspections as well as a reduced maintenance rate plus a 10% discount on all service repairs. AirCare, big enough to serve you, small enough to care, 920-356-8860. Hi, this is Dr. Adam Forster at Columbus Family Dental. If you've been unhappy with your smile, it's time that you come and see us. Our team of doctors are waiting to help you get your smile back. We'll take the time to talk with you and treat you like a member of our family, not just another number. Whether it's a whole mouth makeover or simply a little tweak, we'll find the right solution that fits you. For your free, no pressure consultation, call us today at 623-5559. As we come out of the timeout, Wanake tossing it in. Actually, a bounce pass into McKenzie. 38-38, 4-12 to go in the game. Clock running. Beaverdam led by 12 at the break. Right now, we're dead even on the John Deere Horicon work scoreboard. Beaverdam with hot shooting in the first half, and there's a ball knocked loose but saved by Ducharme out to Johnson. He buries a three. Devin Johnson, three big three-pointers in the second half. It's 41-38, Wanake. How about that guy? Warriors in front. Call for the tie. That three is no good from the top of the arc. And Johnson the rebound. Devin Johnson, three triples in the second half. He's a one of the big reasons that this... One a key team is now in front by three. As we had a ball knocked out, but Warriors are going to keep possession. 3.28 to go. Beaver Dam's been outscored 25 to 10 thus far in the second half. In the right corner, here's a baseline drive. Here's a shot up for Selk, and he scores. Eli Selk. 43-38, want a key by five on the John Deere Horicon work scoreboard. Exactly three minutes left, and now Beaverdam turns it over. Two on one, three on one the other way, and they get it to McKenzie. He lays it up and in, and just like that, it's 45-38, Warriors by seven with 2.46 to go. We were tied at 38, but now a 7-0 run for Wanake. And they lead late. Two and a half to go. There's a drive and a shot up. No good. Jen's falling down. Did he get the rebound? And well, he got a time. They got a timeout. Beaverdam calls timeout. Brought to you by Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. 
Let our family take care of your family. This is a 30-second timeout. We'll keep it here. Hey, just got an email from Mel. Melissa Gehring, Mel and Elsa, her daughter, checking in. Exciting game, they say. Go Beavers. Well, happy holidays to you guys, and hope you're all doing well. Hope you had a good Christmas and a happy new year to all you guys. Thanks for checking in. Again, sports at dailydodge.com if you want to sneak one in real quick. Well, don't forget to tune in to the monthly Let's Talk radio show with Superintendent Mark DiStefano on the third Thursday of the month at 11.10 a.m. on 95.3 WBEV, the Beaverdam Unified School District guiding students, empowering futures. Our broadcast tonight brought to you by our presenting video sponsors, Columbus Family Dental, Hometown Glass and Improvement, and the Beaverdam Unified School District. Tonight's game also brought to you by John Deere Horicon Works, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Air Care, Richards Insurance, Metal Craft of Mayville, Landmark Credit Union, Jerry's Automotive, McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Ergo Bank, Great Harvest Bakery Cafe, Surefire, Fox Brothers Piggly Wiggly, Preferred Dental Partners, Slumberland, and Kraft Heinz as we have Mendoza on a drive getting fouled right off the timeout. That was Ducharme picking up his... At his uh, third of the evening. And Mendoza missing the first free throw, but 223 remaining. Beaverdam's down seven. Looking for another one here. Next one. Yes, he got one of two. Nine points in the game for Mendoza. 45-39, Golden Beavers within six, 2.16 to go. And a timeout, one a key. Ducharme was having some trouble getting it across. Warriors with a full timeout brought to you by Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Let our family take care of your family back in one minute. Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN. Ready, set, Ergo. The game plan is to make banking convenient for you. Ergo Bank has locations in Marquezan and Fox Lake with interactive teller machines in five different communities. And at all locations, speak with a live teller and conduct most in-branch transactions by transferring, withdrawing, or depositing. That's better banking by design. Open 7A to 7P Monday through Friday, 7 to noon on Saturdays. Call them today at 920-398-2336 or visit ErgoBank.com. Ergo Bank, an equal housing lender and member FDIC. Hi, my name is Michelle and I'm the plant manager for the Beaver Dam Kraft Heinz plant. I'm excited to share with you that we are rolling out new schedules to allow people more time with their families. Come meet me and my team and let us tell you about the exciting changes we are making to our schedules and our great benefits. Please go to careers.crafthines.com, search by Beaver Dam and see all the opportunities we have available. We believe family time is important. Our new schedule will allow you to have a schedule that works for you and your family. All shifts are 12 hours with up to three to four days off per week. We offer shift differentials and premiums for weekend work at Kraft Heinz. All right, we have 2.13 remaining in the game here at the Beaverdam High School Fieldhouse. Mike Tronson with you on Daily Dodge TV and 14.30 ESPN. Wanakee with the ball off the timeout, leading by 6.45.39 on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Clock running. Now down to exactly two minutes left. Johnson double team. Pressure by Beaverdam. Johnson triple team. He got rid of it. Boba has it. Now he's worked on defensively by Jens. Sends it back up to Ducharme. Ducharme, driving, puts on the brakes, back to Boba, top of the key for three, no good off the back rim. Rebound right to Johnson on the left baseline. His pass is tipped out of bounds, last touch by Call. And now we're down to a minute and 38 seconds left to play in this contest. Wanakee still with possession and a six point lead, 45-39. Warriors trailed most of the game. We were all tied at 38 with a little over four minutes left and a 7-0 run by Wanakee. Still leading by six here. Jens just picked up his second. Fifth team foul. Here now has got a, one more to give here. Ducharme, double teamed up top. Being hassled and a jump ball. He's tied up. Where's the arrow? The arrow's pointing to the left. That means Wanakee keeps it. 
But just a great job by the uh, Beaver Dam hands team there to tie him up. And now this is inbounds pass taken by Ducharme. Gets it through a double team. Bova down to Frisch in the corner. A minute 16 left. And now a whistle is, as uh, Jens hit the deck. Jens picked up a foul in the process. His third, team sixth. So the next one, Wanakee then is in the bonus. Johnson double team. That didn't take long, did it? So Devin Johnson will go to the line to shoot the bonus. His team leading by six. 45-39. We're down to a minute 13 left. Johnson, front end of the bonus is good. That's a big one because that makes it a three-possession game. And Johnson's had a heck of a second half. Three triples, and now that free throw, and a second one's on the way. It's no good. Rebound, Genzi tipped it right to Schmuel. 46-39. Wanake leads Beaverdam. 68 seconds left. On your John Deere Horicon works forward. That one high off the top of the backboard. Boy, that was a acrobatic shot there by Schmuel. Tried to go high off the glass and hit the top of the backboard, which is out of play. Wanakee's going to get it back with 64 seconds remaining. Full court pressure by the Golden Beavers and a quick foul. 61 seconds left. Boy, Beaver Dam played so well for the vast majority of this game. Be a be a tough one to, to lose if they can't come back in this one. But if you're one a key, boy, you know, they, uh, they never gave up. They just fought and fought and fought and made some nice adjustments in the second half. And here they are ahead by seven late. Now a free throw on the way. It is in and out. No good. That's a big miss. Here comes Call ahead to Stoby. Right baseline drive. Puts it up off the rim. No rebound pulled down by Elliott. And we're down now to 49 seconds left. Beaverdam trailing by 7, 46-39 on the John Deere Horicon work scoreboard. Quick foul by Jens on Johnson, but going to be tough now for Beaverdam as time is ticking away, or, or down to 44 seconds, I should say. But Johnson at the free throw line. One plus one. Missed that shot. Here come the Beavers, but they need some buckets and some stops or some misses in a hurry. Deep three call. That's off the rim. No good. Johnson has the rebound and immediately fouled by Mendoza. 31 and a half seconds remaining. Yeah, this is a game that Beaver Dam would have loved to have Grab tonight, but right now, Wanakee is in pretty good shape here. Johnson back at the free throw line. He's missed a couple, and he's not going to miss that one. Big second half for Mr. Johnson, as I mentioned, 47-39. And now 48-39 as he knocks them both down. Nine-point uh, Wanakee lead on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Half a minute to go. Call, layup, good. And that's his first bucket of the half. Timeout called by Beaver Dam. This timeout brought to you by Reed Chrysler, Dodge Jeep Ram. Let our family take care of your family. I got a score update here. It says uh, Fall River leading Randolph 39-33 with 12 minutes remaining in that game. Oh, let's see here. Wait a bit, beg your pardon. That was an old one. The new update says Fall River leading 54-41 with 3 minutes and 40 seconds left in that game. And the last we heard, the Beaverdam boys hockey team was leading Milton across the street at the Family Center, 12-0 at the end of the second period. Beaverdam boys had a 10-goal first period tonight. That was not a misprint. They led it 10-0 at the end of the first period, tacked on two more in the second. And uh, I don't know if that game's gone final yet, but 
Beaver Dam was absolutely dominating. We saw them on Tuesday night when they beat McFarland 6-3. They had a four-goal first period that night. Well, little did we know what they were capable of after that one as they are uh, enjoying a big lead tonight. That game going on right across the street from our location, Beaver Dam Family Center. 24 and a half seconds left. Wanna key inbounding. Beaver Dam gonna employ full court pressure, but now the officials want to discuss sausage or pepperoni. And I'm not sure exactly what the discussion is is regarding. So now I think we're ready to go. Wanna key has all five of its players on the baseline and they all sprint in and now the inbounds pass to Bova. I've never seen that. I don't think I've ever seen that. It looked like they were ready to run those killer races you know, used to do in gym class. All five of them were on the baseline to our right. Four of them took off and then the inbounder just found one of them. I've never seen that. Have you, Justin? I've never seen that. 20.6 seconds left. We've got a foul here and now free throws coming up. But Ace, that's why you come to the gym every night. You never know what you're going to see. And the first free throw in and out, no good for Ducharme. 48-41 is the score, one a key on top. Second free throw is good for Ducharme. 49-41. Three ball, call, yes, JT Call hits a three. 49-44 with just 10 seconds left. And now a quick foul with 8.1 seconds to play. So Beaver Dam's within five, but uh, not much time left. JT Call with his fifth three-pointer of the game. But Bova goes to the line after the uh, foul on Cabreda. And the first one is up, and it's good for Bova. 50-44. Next one is good. 51-44. Ball knocked loose, but that's going to do it. As the horn will sound, and the Wanakee Warriors rally tonight on the road. They were down 12 at the break, but a big rally as they come back and knock off Beaver Dam. Final score on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Wanakee 51 and Beaverdam 44. Beaverdam drops to 3 and 6 on the season, 1 and 4 in the conference. Wanakee now 4 and 0 in Badger East play and 6 and 3 overall on the season. Let's do this. We'll take a 3 minute break. We're back in 3 minutes for our John Deere post game show right after this on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN. John Deere not only builds great equipment, it's a great place to build your career and a high quality of life. You see, there's a certain kind of pride in being a part of a great American brand. It's the security that comes from learning new skills you'll have for a lifetime, a more confident future with unlimited growth opportunities, and the knowledge that you're valued and rewarded with a competitive benefits package. We're Deer Strong and Horicon Proud. Are you one of us? Deck the garage during the Big Finish sales event at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam, featuring the best deals of the year on the best vehicles in the market. Take five grand off brand new Ram 1500 Bighorn Crew Cabs and finance rates as low as 1.9%. Dodge Durango starting at 43219, Jeep Compass Trailhawks under 37 grand, and just arrived the all new Jeep Grand Cherokee 4xE. Welcome to the Electric Revolution. Happy holidays and thank you for allowing our family to take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam and ReedChrysler.com. Jerry's Automotive in Beaverdam is a champion of our local schools. Team up with Jerry's Automotive by pumping your gas at their Spirit Pump, where two cents of every gallon is donated to a local school each month. Jerry's Automotive also provides exceptional vehicle service and repairs and a great selection of convenience items. Visit Jerry's Automotive Center WI.com and on Facebook. 
Jerry's Automotive, 700 North Spring Street in Beaverdam, across the street from Beaverdam Food Pride. Is it time to update the bathroom? Then it's time to head to Hometown Glass and Improvement of Beaver Dam. Hometown has a full complement of Vasco shower enclosures. Hometown Glass makes your selection of enclosures easy, and they provide hassle-free installation. When you purchase a Basco shower enclosure, your expectations will be exceeded. Hometown Glass promises you a classy, elegant, and luxurious centerpiece for your bathroom. Hometown Glass and Improvement, Highway 33 east of Beaver Dam, on the web at hometownglass.com. What's in your kid's lunchbox today? Turkey and bacon on honey whole wheat? Roast beef on sourdough? PB&J on cinnamon chip with bananas? That is bananas, but that's what fresh baked breads from Great Harvest can do for you. Unleash your sandwich ingenuity. So show your kids some lunchbox love with chicken salad on cranberry orange bread, Italian on cheddar garlic bread. Then show everyone your creation at Instagram or Facebook using this hashtag. Great Harvest. Bread. The way it ought to be. Fox Brothers Piggly Wiggly in Beaver Dam has everything you need to keep your family happy and healthy. From pampered to perfection produce to boar's head deli meats and cheeses, Fox Brothers award-winning brats and certified Angus beef. If it's not certified, it's not the best. Be sure to go online at Fox Bros Piggly Wiggly and find the latest weekly flyer full of savings and follow them on Facebook to learn more about their upcoming events. Shop local and save at Fox Brothers Piggly Wiggly in Beaver Dam. You're watching the Daily Dodge Post Game Show, presented by John Deere. And we are back inside the BDHS Fieldhouse. Mike Tronson for Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN. This is our post game show brought to you by John Deere Horicon Works. And on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard, final score tonight, one a key with a rally as the Warriors come from behind to beat Beaver Dam by the score of 51 to 44. Beaver Dam led this game 28-16 at halftime, but the Warriors outscored the Golden Beavers 35-16 in the second half. This game actually was tied at 38 apiece with about 4 minutes and 12 seconds remaining, and over the final 4 plus minutes, over that final 4-12, Wanakee outscored Beaver Dam 13-6, and they win this one by 7 today. Our game brought to you by our presenting video sponsors, Columbus Family Dental, Hometown Glass and Improvement, and the Beaverdam Unified School District. Tonight's game also brought to you by John Deere Horicon Works, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Air Care, Richards Insurance, Metalcraft of Mayville, Landmark Credit Union, Jerry's Automotive, McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Ergo Bank, Great Harvest Bakery Cafe, Surefire, Fox Brothers Piggly Wiggly, Preferred Dental Partners, Slumberland, and Kraft Heinz. Now, the Beaver Dam Unified School District would like to thank parents and families for their active engagement in the education of their children. BDUSD staff are working hard to make the best of each and every opportunity they have to serve your children. Your partnership in that effort is critical to student success. The BD fam better together. Let's run down the final scoring summary from this one. Four victorious, one a key. They were paced by Devin Johnson. He had 12 points, all of them coming in the second half, including three huge three-point baskets. It was Keaton Frisch with 10 for the Warriors tonight. I've got uh, Shea Ducharme with eight, including one from downtown. Jake Bova had eight for Wanaki, six of those in the second half. Seven points for Caden McKenzie. I've got, uh, let's see here, a couple players with two points each. Garrett Lenzendorf. Eli Selk and Vance Johnson all with two points apiece tonight for the Wanakee Warriors. Meanwhile, for Beaver Dam, JT Call, what a monstrous night. 14 points in the first half, five in the second. He had five three-pointers, 19 points total. Also in double figures for Beaver Dam, Caleb Schmuel with 10, including one from downtown. Cameron Mendoza had nine tonight. Parker Stoby with a triple in the first half. He finished with three. Quentin Cabrera good for two, and Jack Jens chipped in a free throw. He finished the game with one. We're going to get up Beaver Dam head coach Tim Ladrin up here at the broadcast booth for a quick post-game chat. We'll head a, hand over the uh, headset here and get them all set. Can you hear me okay in there, uh, Coach? Yeah, I got you. All right, thanks so much for coming. Well, gosh, I tell you what, yeah, I, feel, I felt so bad for your club. They, they played so well for the vast majority of the yeah. game, and, 
and only to come up a little bit short at the end. Now, give me your overall thoughts. I mean, I love the the start you guys had. First half was excellent. Got a little tougher in the second half. I know that uh, uh, they made some adjustments and, uh, you know, just uh, couldn't quite get uh, enough to go in and at, the, at the end there. Yeah, defensively, we are awfully good. I mean, that's, you know, they're, they're averaging about 70 a game, you know. You held them way down. Yeah. Way down. Um, you know, sometimes it, it, we're two of eight from the line. You know, that that hurts. You know, we, and this is a team that's shooting. I mean, we're shooting, I think, just over 70% as a team for the year from the line. So we're two of eight. You know, it, it, that stings a little bit, obviously. You know, make, you know, if we get four extra points there somewhere, you know, at the line, um, you know, that makes it a little bit different ball game down the stretch. And then, um, you know, we missed a few bunnies down there. You know, we got a couple good looks and just missed. And we, you got to credit them, too. I mean, they really ramped it up defensively. And they're athletic and long and and really, really deep. And they just keep sending guys at you. And they're all 6'3 with long arms. Yeah. And, you know, it's just, it's tough. Um, but, again, it, it, it just kind of, you know, the effort was great. I, I mean, we're, we're, it, it, we're so close. You know, it just um, – it, the, just the frustrating pieces. It's just a, it's another scoring slump in the second half that hurt us. Yeah, there we talked about their length, but I thought you know for the most part you handled it pretty well. And uh, did you guys? I mean, you had a lot of time uh, again uh, over uh, you know uh, the uh, last few weeks to in practice to work on things. Did you work on anything that uh, you know that you kind of used to your advantage tonight here a little bit? Yeah, or? I mean, I mean, you know, I, I think it's just we're getting better. I yeah, mean, yeah. you know, and, and you know we're we're try, you know we're certainly trying to do different things on both ends of the floor. Um, you know, I just, it, you know, I, I think we got some good looks offensively, especially early. Um, and then, you know, we, again, we, you know, their, their ball pressure gave us some trouble there. And, um, but, um, yeah, it, hopefully, you know, games like, you know, the four, you know, this four game stretch of the forest, Germantown, McQuantico and, and these guys, I mean, it's long athletes that are deep in, in just, you know, they, and hopefully this will make us better. I, th I think there's no question we're better if you watch us play tonight. Um, yeah, we just got to figure out a way to, to score it a little more consistently. You t you talked to me a little bit in the pregame about, uh, you know, you thought your guys are we're in a pretty good spot and maybe yep. set up for a little bit of a run here in the second half. Now, I know you didn't win the game tonight, but based on the way you battled and, and the way you played in this game, can that still be, uh, you know, something to kind of maybe spur these guys a little bit? Because, I mean, you played extremely well. Uh, you had a chance. I mean, yep. you were right there at the end. So in that sense, even though you lost the game, can this still kind of, based on the, the quality you play tonight, maybe give these guys, uh, you know, a little boost here? I mean, I think so. And again, I think, you know, our our you know, our energy level and our attitude has been great. I mean, I, I don't know if we necessarily need the boost necessarily because yeah. I really like where we're at. Okay. Um um, but I, I, I certainly maybe I mean, maybe a confidence level thing of yeah. you know I mean we we know we can play with, with really good teams we've shown it the last few weeks we just have to put the full 36 minutes together. Well, I tell you, JT Call, he was on fire in that first half tonight. Yep. Um, you know, and he had I have him for 14 points in the first half. Those four three pointers. Uh, I tell you, what, that's about as good a zone as I've seen him in uh, <laughs> maybe ever. I mean, that was he was just feeling it. Yeah, JT, JT's been, been in a nice groove here, and, and we've had some other guys help out. And, you know, part of that, too, is, again, it's um, guys finding guys open and, and, you know, us moving the basketball. I think we did a good job of that tonight. We found some some alleys against their defense, I thought. And, but um, but then, again, their, you know, their length and their athleticism really, you know, can do some damage to you. And, um, you know, just, you know, we just, like you said, just couldn't – and scored enough. You mentioned to me, uh, and this was off the air before the game, but you mentioned you were going to try and run some things around uh, Cam Mendoza offensively tonight, and I thought he had a pretty good game. Yeah, nine, nine points, it doesn't sound like a lot, but, uh, you know, I, I think you, uh, I mean, he, he's, he still had a quality effort, I thought. Yeah, and, and what, some of that stuff is a little bit of a work in progress for us, yeah. but we're doing a good job of, um, you know, it, it's a new, it's a little bit of a new role. Um, it's, it's op it, I think it opened up the floor for us a little bit inside. Um, and, you know, he, I thought he did a nice job, and we're, we'll continue to work through some things with that, but um, I, thought it was a, I thought it was a nice effort out of him. And, um, yeah, I, you know, again, a, a great team effort. We just, just couldn't put it away. Well, as we said, tonight opening up a busy, busy stretch, and in, uh, well, less than 48 hours, you're right back on this floor with uh, a non-conference game against Milwaukee Vincent. I know that's the, 
a game that uh, was you got to make up for the Sparta game, which is not going to be rescheduled. Uh, give me a give me a preview of Milwaukee Vincent. What do you expect from them? Well, super quick, frantic pace. Um, they want to fly around, not not overly big, um, but a team that's going to really really get up into our face, and we need to continue to see that. Um, I think it'll make another game that'll make us better. Um, you know, it's a team that uh, is historically really good. They're probably not quite as good as they have been in the past, uh, but they're going to be a good challenge. Um, not quite the size. When I see quite the size we've seen the last couple nights, um, but just a different dynamic with different, the, uh, the quickness. Completely, and the yeah, a completely yeah. different style of play with their speed and their athleticism. And you've got Milwaukee Vincent on Saturday. Next Tuesday, you go to Watertown. We'll be there for that one. Thursday next week, it's uh, that's a week from tonight. That's against Baraboo. That's the makeup for the postponement. And then a week from Saturday, Wapan coming in. And everybody's looking forward to that, I'm sure, getting that rivalry game back together. Yeah, we got a lot to do before we get to that one. So we're gonna we're, we're just going to dial in on Milwaukee Vincent. And then uh, and we got a couple of really important conference games next week before we head into that Wapan game. With this busy stretch, you know, with basically a game that seems almost every other day for the most part, uh, do you have to dial down in practice a yeah. little bit just kind of keep legs fresh? And yeah, everything? we did that yesterday. We'll have to do it tomorrow. Uh, get a lot of shooting in and, and work through a few things. But, but yeah, I mean – a lot of it, we certainly don't want to be leggy at the end of the week so we got to make sure we're we're taking care of our bodies and, and making sure we're uh, we're healthy going this during this stretch well as i stated i mean even though it was a loss tonight i thought by based on the way you played going into this stretch here that's a positive sign i think yeah. it's a positive sign yeah for sure it was and and uh we'll just we continue to build and uh you know I, again i've been saying it all year i like where these guys are at we're, we're getting better and uh you know Eventually here, it'll start showing up on the right side of the, right side of the column. All right. Well, Tim, we will see you soon. Uh, thanks again for coming up, yep. as you always do, and uh, we'll catch you down the road. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. All right. It. You bet. That's Tim Ladrin, head coach of Beaver Dam, joining us on the John Deere postgame show. Again, Beaver Dam falling tonight to Wanakee, 51-44. to And, again, with the uh, win, Wanakee now 6-3 and overall, 4-0 in Badger East play. Beaver Dam is at 3-6 uh, and on the season. One and four in Badger East play. The uh, upcoming schedule, as we look at it, uh, for Wana Key, their next game is this Saturday. They got a home game uh, against Stevens Point. They're going to play Spash on Saturday at 4 15. Uh, and then on Tuesday, they're back into conference play, hosting DeForest at 7 15. That's going to be a battle uh, next week, Tuesday night, before heading up to Lacrosse on Friday and Saturday of, the, uh, of next week to play on Alaska and St. Cloud Tech at the Lacrosse Center, the Midwest Players Classic. Uh, wow, that's going to be uh, interesting there. We'll see how they do up there uh, with a couple of non-conference games in lacrosse. Meanwhile, for Beaver Dam, I just talked about it. Beaver Dam's here at home against Milwaukee Vincent on Saturday afternoon. That is going to be a 3.30 start for the varsity game. And then Tuesday, Beaver Dam boys are at Watertown. We'll have that game, I believe, on the uh, Daily Dodge TV. I'm just going to grab my schedule here. Yeah, next Tuesday, Beaver Dam boys at Watertown on Daily Dodge TV and simulcasting on 1430 ESPN. Next week, Thursday, we'll be on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN. The Beaver Dam boys taking on Baraboo here on this floor. And then a week from Saturday night, January 14th, Beaver Dam boys host Wapan at 730. That's also on Daily Dodge TV. So a lot of Beaver Dam boys basketball coming your way over the next week or so on uh, our broadcast outlets here. But our next hoops broadcast is actually tomorrow night. Beaver Dam girls go to Watertown tomorrow night. We'll be there on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN. Pre-game show, the John Deere pre-game show at 7 o'clock. Tip time is at 7.15 tomorrow night, approximately. Join us for the Golden Beavers and the Goslings as the girls will do battle tomorrow night down in Watertown. But that's going to wrap it up for us here tonight. 51-44, your final as Wanakee rallies for the win over Beaver Dam. Wanakee outscoring Beaver Dam in the second half 35-16, and they outscored them 13-6 in the final 4 minutes, 12 seconds to pull out the win. Great game. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. And I want to thank all those folks that uh, sent emails during the game tonight. I always love interacting with you. Let's uh, again thank Kyra back at the 1430 ESPN studios for engineering the radio simulcast. Justin's on site here. Justin Wilski, a.k.a. Ninja, videographer slash engineer for the Daily Dodge TV video stream. He's the best in the business. Ninja, thanks. We'll see you tomorrow night. 
for Kyra, for Justin, Mike Tronson saying so long from the BDHS Fieldhouse. Have a pleasant evening, and we'll talk to you again tomorrow night. This has been a Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Sports presentation. Good night, everybody. You're watching the Daily Dodge postgame show.